Yes. Uh, so by the way, I have a test on Friday on light okay. chapter. On light chapter. Okay. Yes, sir. So are we done with uh, like motion and time? Yeah, we are done with the chapter, and today yes, we'll sir, be we beginning with light. light. Okay, sir. Yeah, why you? Uh, you were saying so something. Like, uh so like t- this monday i'm having my exam so hmm. there is this... water pressure so it's to be completed okay this so monday you need water resources okay this monday okay, you're having your exam okay here yeah, why go yes, sundus um chakrika you were saying something yes sir because my test is on friday on this friday or the next friday the next friday next friday Okay, okay. Today, by the way, I was about to begin with the chapter light. Okay. Anyways, we can begin with the new chapter. Okay, now, just give me a moment. Let <coughs> me add some pages to the slide which I have got here. <clears throat> <clears throat> so why a chapter waste water resource and management is that the chapter yes yeah why are you there or not i believe i'm audible Yes, I am audible. Yeah, I am saying uh, the wastewater treatment. That is the chapter which we are required to uh, complete. No, please uh, uh, read the full topic of the chapter. It's wastewater, I believe. Wastewater, simply wastewater story. I think. Yeah. Okay. I believe I am not audible to her. Ah, uh, sir. they like, can you repeat what you tell yeah i was saying that the topic the name of the chapter is waste water study right no sir water a precious resource okay water a precious resource okay yes, okay i thought it's waste water so water a precious resource right first you guys tell me what is it that the water has been considered a precious resource yeah why so have we are, mm-hmm. i think so many minerals that help us mm-hmm. like in our body it will it help us so i think so so yes. we die if we don't drink water yeah we drink water so that various metabolic activities can go on inside our body Yes, sir. It's, uh, we can also see. Okay, why go you? So it's like a life source. Mm, life source. Chakrika, you were saying. I was saying that we need to stay hydrated. Uh, yes, <clears throat> Basically, we need to stay hydrated so that uh, the metabolic activities, the various metabolic activities, can carry on in our body, right now. that's why if people wait to suffer when someone is suffering from dehydration thereby the person suffer from weakness loss of appetite right now and so many problems right so in our body if we to talk about body all the uh, processes that is occurring in our body that requires a liquid medium to occur whether it's the process of ingestion like if someone were to start uh, eat a uh, like uh, have you guys Mm, if someone were to try to consume turmeric powder, turmeric powder, or someone were to try and eat a food which is very dry in nature, he or she will be having a hard time engulfing that if it consists of no moisture in it at all. Getting it, what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So thereby, you see that in the process of ingestion also. liquid has got a role to play also if you were to eat dry fruit 
dry food if you were to eat our mouth basically uh, adds salivary amylase to it adds saliva to it thereby making it moist and wet so that it can easily pass into the food pipe that is the esophagus right thereby in the stomach also we see that secretions that are um, that are secreted onto the food it is also of liquid medium now right either it is of liquid medium or also for the the food which goes through the process of digestion thereby it converts into a semi solid form not 100% solid form right so there we have got the util utility of water in our body what else there are so many um phenomena that is directly linked with water for example the process of photosynthesis how can we link the process of photosynthesis with water like if there is no water there will be no growth of plants if, if there is no growth of plants where is the question of photosynthesis having occurred right now and since the plants are the primary producers if there were to be no plants then the animals next in line in the food chain will they be surviving yeah oh, so without water we can also not grow oh, crop exactly exactly without water we can't do irrigation also so first point is that it is required for plants to carry out photosynthesis we are just linking the topics here okay don't get confused like photosynthesis we usually take carbon dioxide now usually take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere we take water if water is not solely required for photosynthesis only hmm. so it is required for photosynthesis it is required for irrigation purposes also in what other aspects we have got ut utility of water like the precipitation rainfall if the oceans were to dry out all the water bodies if they were to dry out if there is to be no vegetation there will be no question of evaporation now evaporation won't be happening thereby there will be no formation of cloud hence there will be no rainfall getting it what else yes women so we talked about for survival of life okay example human in which various metabolic activities requires water right now that's why people can survive without food okay without food for like um, more than uh, for 3 to 4 days or almost for a week the body can survive but the body requires water more than uh, uh, more than food when the body is under low nutrition okay low uh, uh, low diet then the body at least it requires um, regular intake of water so that the basic uh, function that is going on in the body it continues because it requires a liquid medium what other phenomena requires water yes guys <clears throat> yes uh, so like uh... to flush out toxins from our body mm exactly good to flush out toxins that will also be part of the metabolic activity okay or mm mm-hmm. what else we cannot cook our food wash our clothes for washing our clothes also very good so cooking cooking washing of clothes for cooking the food one point you guys are not mentioning here like water serves as the what just like we humans are living in the air medium the medium in which we are surviving we are breathing in the gaseous medium now from the gaseous medium that is the air while there are aquatic animals and aquatic plants also like the fishes so water serves as the what serves as a 
medium in which aquatic plants live right yes sir plants and animals live right so we have seen that there are so many uh <laughs> field so many uses of water right and the list is very long right now okay also uh, do you guys know when uh, uh, when world water day is celebrated yes when sir we celebrate? Uh, 22 march 22 march good the water day is celebrated on 22 of march world water day why do we celebrate this day by the way to raise awareness among yes. the people about the conservation of water so it is celebrated to raise awareness about conservation of water if we were to talk about the distribution of water on earth how much of fresh water is there right now and in total how much of water is there in the rivers in the swamps okay how much of water is there in the ground water how much of water um, is saline in nature how much of it occurs in the oceans it is found in the oceans is any idea hmm? so like 60% of our body is like hmm. water more than 60% it's almost 70% Yeah. Okay. Um. So seventy. I'm talking about. Have uh, to be exact. It's somewhere some seventy one or seventy two. Okay. Dif uh, different places you will be uh, getting different data. Around seventy one or seventy two. Okay. But I am talking about concentration of water on Earth. Okay. That so is like, true. That seventy one percent is present in our body, or seventy two percent. Yes, so like oceans and seas, like ninety seven percent each. Hmm. Good. Water. Oh, and the wastewater, I think. Mm hmm. Uh, twenty five to twenty seven percent. Okay. We will make three distinctions here. Okay. First, we will be talking about the. earth water how much of water is saline how much of water is fresh water right after that we will be talking about fresh water then like the distribution of fresh water the 3% fresh water like look here you will be getting almost 97% of water on earth exist as oceans water is in the ocean that is saline in nature so that is not fit to consume or to do any other activities in fact the saline water is not only unfit to drink it is unfit to perform other activities also so many activities cannot be performed using the saline water whether it's washing the clothes or cooking the uh, cooking the food or uh, performing experiments in the lab right so only 3% here is existing as fresh water right and this fresh water is also not like very much drinkable okay because 2.5% exactly 3.5% in a general manner we can see that it's just 3% okay, okay. now <laughs> if we to talk about this 3% fresh water exist where let's take make another table here so almost 68.7% per of this 3% fresh water exist in exist in the solid state that is in the ice caps and the glaciers so yes, 68 mm, exactly 68.7% it exist in the solid form in the ice caps plus in glaciers so thereby it is still not we still can't drink that water because it is in solid state right now while 30 point almost 1% exist as ground water this exist as 
ग्राउंड वाटर बाय द बट बट द सैड थिंग इज दैट द ग्राउंड वाटर टेबल इज आल्सो गोइंग डाउन एंड द रेस्ट इज रिमेनिंग हाउ मच एट जीरो पॉइंट हाउ मच पर्सन इज लेफ्ट नाइंटी एट पॉइंट एट सो जीरो पॉइंट टू पर्सन इज लेफ्ट राइट ओके आउट ऑफ डैट ऑल्सो आउट ऑफ डैट ऑल्सो सर्फेस वाटर इज ऑल्सो देर ना लाइक यू है स्मॉल पॉन्ड्स द स्मॉल लेक्स आर देयर so uh, in so that, that also there is 21% which one 0. Point... In, like the surface uh, like on the earth mm-hmm. surface like, so like lakes and rivers are like 0.09 percentage hmm look here <clears throat> first we took the whole data how much of water is there on earth that is 97 in the oceans 3 percent is fresh water then we are categorizing 3 percent here so out of that 3% fresh water 68.7% is in the is stored in the ice caps and the glaciers almost 30% is in the ground water and the rest water that is remaining some of it is the surface water the surface is water is what water found in the form of lakes or ponds small water bodies right towards And so the, if it's lakes and ponds then yeah. it is like uh, 0.65 like that i think so 0.65 you are getting yes no sir. it's like no hmm. it's like 0.09 percentage okay look the data which i know which i am aware of of it is somewhere around 0.3 percent and then you are the next you are now left with 0.9 percent 0.9 percent it exists in other forms okay it could be in form of very small water bodies okay now even if you were to talk about this surface water 0.3% water if you were to draw a table for this one also 0.3% of water so 0.3% water out of that almost 85 to 87% of that water exists in the form of lakes almost 88% exists in the form of lakes here getting it now and the next 11 to 12% let's say 12% exists in the form of swamps you know what is swamp okay yes sir and the remaining how much of remaining is there okay let's not say it. it's 87 here 11 then the remaining will be 2% remaining 2% is found in the rivers okay got it then guys okay this is also fresh water this is also fresh water so for our consumption for our consumption only this 30% 30.1% ground water and this 0.31% and 0.9% water in other forms is available while the majority of the water in the case of fresh water also remains frozen in the form of ice caps and glaciers while in the context of total amount of water present on earth 97% is saline in nature yeah guys any confusion no sir okay yes yeah, sundus no also if you to talk about the land and water ratio on earth simply the percentage so you will get to see that almost 70% of earth is covered with water okay or somewhere it is said that 71% of water of earth is covered with water right now however all of this water cannot be consumed by the living organism present on earth why is it so because the distribution of water is not even yes, and it sir. is not the same everywhere somewhere it is saline somewhere it is frozen somewhere it is deep under the ground right somewhere it consists of toxic um, um, toxic metals in it getting it now okay so this is was about the distribution of water on earth now if we were to talk about the states of water what are the states in which water exists on earth hmm. 
a solid solid liquid and gas by the way mm, this uh, to, 2023 year no it has yes, been called sir. as the international year of fresh water to bring awareness among the people about the importance of water as a resource so this year we, we are living in it has been called as the international year of fresh water international year of fresh water now why we are talking about fresh water why we have cons- uh, called this year as the international year of fresh water like government gives these motos different motos are given every year right now for example if data shows that poverty is increasing in the world so that year might be called as international year of poverty thereby increasing awareness and concern regarding the poverty or if there was uh, if data came out regarding the hunger, hunger index that the uh, global hunger index has uh, increased people are sleeping uh, hungry so uh, thereby that year will be named as the international year for hunger ir- eradication so thereby the purpose to give such motos and such taglines is basically to raise awareness among the people so remember this year this year was called as what international year of fresh water year of fresh water yeah someone was asking a question i believe chakrika you were saying something no sir okay okay then so 71% of the earth consists of water and hence the earth has been also called as blue planet blue planet, blue planet good blue planet okay is it that the color of the uh, earth is blue or does it appear to be uh, blue when seen from the space no sir like because of the water because of the water okay or when it is seen from the space okay now it appears blue because of the scattering of blue light okay yes sir hmm. now if i were to talk about the origin of water like where this origin uh, like where did all this water came on earth hmm. yes can you guys think of this like if we to talk about the origin of water hmm? sir i think they were ice cubes like big ice cubes and they melt hmm? and then like they form a river and ocean hmm there was ice age yeah there was ice age suddenly what happened in the atmosphere it has been said that in the atmosphere of the earth concentration of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases started to increase thereby increasing the temperature of the earth right now thereby the water started to melt continents started to drift away okay and yes. thereby water uh, seeped into uh, into the earth and it started to take different forms somewhere it uh, uh, kept to remain frozen in the case of um, poles of the earth somewhere like it became saline right now okay so <clears throat> right yeah so how does the icebergs or like the uh, ice is like how did it actually form uh how they were form talking about the formation of icebergs uh, i would see that you see in the universe we see that different planets uh, or different heavenly or celestial bodies they were uh, like if you were to talk about the case of milky way galaxy hmm, how it came into origin we say that there was a big bang explosion a mighty so explosion the yeah the big bang theory big bang theory is there yes right sir now. yeah so you see uh, we say that if you were to talk about the case of the stars the stars have got a life span of their own also right now so you guys know what is nebula yeah nebula it's a lump of gas in the space do one thing after the class search nebula you will get to have a look at the pictures of the nebula thereby you will be seeing that different 
gases are there in the nebula that glows basically so our sun before it was actually a sun it was part of the nebula okay our earth that we see here it might also have been part of some nebula okay it might sometime it might have been gas okay the earth that you see today if you were to go billions and billions of years ago you would find that earth was not a rocky planet at that time it was basically gas gaseous in nature so so many gases particles and so many rock particles they combined together and through million years millions of years millions of years it formed into a planet so the type of uh, minerals and the type of components found in any celestial body for example our planet earth it was determined based on what particles what components combined through millions of years ago to form a planet getting what i'm trying to say yes sir so yes, we can we can't really say that how it formed it formed because through the gradual process of formation of earth okay there were different stages at some stage the temperature of the earth was extremely low that is the ice age thereby all the water molecules present on the surface of the earth is started to froze right then came the stage of the earth where the temperature started to increase so but then how did that water even form like there are no chances in like <laughs> there is no water in other planets like in earth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how how on earth is started to form it's the same reason moments ago i said that for example on mars or other planets okay in some uh, for example if you take the case of venus for example okay or moon there has been no traces of water there on moon there has been traces of copper iron is there okay nickel is there these elements are there but so far there has been no traces of water why because when moon was formed it was not formed from the components as you have those components present on earth also like on earth you have got water because in the process of formation of earth the molecules of hydrogen and oxygen they were also present there thereby earth has got water while the molecules while there there uh, while the molecules of hydrogen and oxygen they were not present while the while moon was forming as simple as that yeah getting in what i'm trying to say yes i got it hmm but i can answer that like how i yeah, just can i leave and join for okay, one sure. minute sir okay no sure <laughs> but i can tell you that how ice icebergs were formed hmm? icebergs uh, you know i guess, I guess so. like earth was like gas right <laughs> <laughs> I guess these gas like have like have water vapors and then mm -hmm. water and mm -hmm. then ice. Ha! Huh. In that manner, you can understand. Also, we can understand in that manner, in this manner, that uh, over the polar land masses, over the poles of the Earth, polar land masses, what would happen? The water would have frozen and accumulated over that land mass, thereby becoming icebergs and um and by becoming ice icebergs and ice caps right now yes so for 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 water to freeze it needs to settle down somewhere now so it will be settling down over the land land masses so where it settle on the land masses for example on the mountains thereby it became ice caps and where it froze on the um in the water body thereby it became icebergs getting it now okay and also icebergs are coming Earth. from where its icebergs are basically coming from where like this is let's say mountain and this is ice cap okay so ice caps are melting and falling into the water body thereby becoming the icebergs also getting it now okay now coming back to our discussion about the water right so 70% of the earth is covered with water however all of them cannot be consumed by the living organism because not all of it is fit different forms of water we were talking about about to begin 
So forms of water are namely three. We have got the solid form, we have the liquid and the gaseous form. In which form the water is formed in maximum amount in the solid, liquid or gas? As a liquid. Liquid, good. Water exists in the solid form as ice and snow on the earth. It exists in form of ice or snow. Mm, or is it, isn't snow like almost a bit related to gas? Which one? Mm -hmm. uh, snow, sir. Snow. Is it almost related to gas? Yes, sir. <laughs> snow is almost related to gas. Okay, or we can say that what is the difference between the ice and the snow? Yeah. If you were to know about like um, the difference between the ice and the snow. No, it is not related to gas. Gas is a different thing now. I, I think you are talking about fog. Yes, sir. I think you're talking about fog. Fog, that's a different thing. That's the water vapor, presence of water vapor in the earth that is condensed so in, in, the, in the times gaseous. of... Mm -hmm. It's basically it's... Uh, gas, gaseous, right? Basically, you see now, the snows are basically what? It comprises of the, like, ice crystals. It comprises of ice crystals, right now. That basically grow, grows when it is suspended in the atmosphere. What is the snow? The snow is basically the ice crystals. When you have got the ice crystals and when these ice crystals are suspended in the atmosphere, thereby we call it as snow. Also, so you will never hear ice fall. You will always be hearing what? The snowfall. And the snow is softer than ice. Yeah. Yes, sir. I get it. That's why you can make a snowball. That's why you can make a snowball, but you cannot make a ball out of ice. So snow basically comprises of very tiny crystals of ice, and that are growing where, when, when they are basically suspended in the atmosphere in cold climate. Getting it now? Is it clear? Why get to you? Is it also clear? Yes, it's clear. Yes. Okay. Okay, then moving on. Talking about liquid, you know, it is present in the uh, form of liquid in the uh, in oceans, in different um, water bodies, in the underground as well. Right now, <laughs> almost 97% exist as saline water. The 3% exists as fresh water. Right now, and there also fresh water is found in underground water and surface water also. By the way, have you guys been making notes of the class or not? <coughs> hmm? yes, have you guys I been taking notes? Okay. Uh, sir, I have not. Mm -hmm. I mean, only for water resources. Mm -hmm. For water resources. So like only for this chapter I've been not. Okay, okay. Talking about the gases state, in the case of gases state, water will basically be existing in the form of water vapor and where? Basically in the atmosphere now. Yes, right? sir. Okay. So that was all about the forms of water. And if you to further uh, stress a little bit about it, like how the form of water changes from solid to liquid and liquid to gas? So like what can we do? Hmm. The solid, if, uh, if we melt, it changes hmm. to water. And then after hmm. boiling the water, it changes to gas, which is water vapor. Hmm. The simple then, thing is that if you were to increase the water, thereby you will be moving from solid to gaseous state. Yeah. And if you were to decrease the temperature, you will be converting it back to solid. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm seeing here that 
if you were to have water in the form of solid in the form of ice cubes or if you have water in the form of gases is to uh, gases form like steam hmm? which one will be having more energy is it the water in the solid form or is it the water in the gases steam steam so can you repeat the question again my question yeah. is that i think yes, it's on, in the solid form no my question is that when we move from solid to gaseous state in the case of water i'm talking about not of any other uh, element we see that uh, uh, my question was again that in which form you will be getting to have more energy does an ice have more energy in it stored or does steam have got more energy i guess again steam, steam why the answer is correct but why so because of the, the high pressure while boiling mm -hmm. we have pressure while boiling no the thing is now look here i mean not the pressure but then like the um, um, due to the temperature mm -hmm. due to the temperature the temperature the high temperature <clears throat> due to the high temperature look here the thing is that as you were heating this ice the water in the solid state you were heating it thereby you are providing energy to it now so energy was being absorbed throughout the process by the water molecules yeah getting what i'm trying to say here you are basically providing energy to this water that is um, in solid state that is ice here and when it converted into steam it would have gained the energy throughout the process it basically gained the energy like if i were to heat a iron rod heat a iron rod thereby it becomes red hot and becomes um, 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 uh, it becomes hot it, because it has gained the heat now it has gained the heat from the fire same thing is with this steam also if you to touch the ice and steam which would will be which will be doing more damage obviously it's steam now yes sir hmm? if someone were try to place their hand over the boiling water after a few minutes the person will feel very pain okay so thereby we say that steam since it has got more energy because it has absorbed the heat hence it is having more energy right also if you were to go back from this steam to solid is the energy lost or gain in that process remember from solid then liquid and then to gas energy is being absorbed by the liquid water here while if you were to go back from steam that is convert steam into uh, uh, um, into liquid by the process of condensation and then again convert that liquid back into solid by freezing so thereby energy is stored by this steam will be loose throughout the process yeah are you guys able to um, get it what i'm trying to say here yeah sundus vaiga and yes, chitika is it is it clear to you guys or not yeah yes sir look here in the next class na in the class 9 uh, you will get to know about the uh concepts like latent heat of vaporization or latent heat of um evaporation thereby you will be understanding about this concept more so simple thing is that as you were to move from liquid state to gaseous state you were heating it now and as you move from sorry start from here from solid to liquid state you were heating it now and then again from liquid to gas you were heating it so thereby this gas has absorbed the heat absorbed the heat the gas molecules would have absorbed the heat thereby they would be having more energy also what do we know that the molecules of water in the gases state are in more motion now they are more free to move in any direction right yes sir getting it now since they are able to move freely thereby they will be having more kinetic energy now 
Yeah, you guys know what is kinetic energy? When anything is in motion, yes, it it possesses kinetic energy. Getting it now? And talking about the solid state, the molecules are closer to here and fixed and um, fixed packed. into a compact space. They are tightly packed here, thereby they can't move anywhere. So since they are in no movement, they are doing no movement, so they have got zero kinetic energy with them. Zero kinetic energy is there. Getting it now? Thereby, they have got no energy in them. Right? While in the gases state, they have got the kinetic energy. Is it clear? Yes, sir. It's clear now. Yeah. Okay. Chakrika, will you please explain what we just discussed right now? Um, so we discussed about the kinetic energy and what, like whether uh, the energy will be decreased or increased if we reverse uh, the process, which is hmm. converting gas into liquid by condensation and the liquid into solid by freezing. Hmm, exactly. So from solid to gas, energy is absorbed. While coming back from gases to solid state, okay. energy I'm is sure. lost. That we represent in the with the negative sign. Okay, lost gain. Okay then. Yes, yeah, Sundus, is it clear to you also? Okay. Parallelly, guys, I would like you guys to parallelly as we are having discussion. Please try to make notes of the class parallelly. Okay now. Okay. Now, next thing is regarding okay. the water cycle. I guess you guys would have already uh, like studied about what is water cycle. Yes, sir. from like yeah. second grade onwards, I think that's like mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yes. What is water cycle? Anyone who would like to explain? Yes. Yeah, like it's the process of evaporating the water and like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So here you have got, let's say, cooperation. Yeah. Sir, sir, I like to Okay, please, one by one, you guys explain. Chakrika, okay. you were explaining. Continue. Oh, okay, sir. So, so in there are like two things in our like in water cycle. Hmm. One is, uh, I mean, no, no, not two things. Like, there's like evaporation involved in water cycle. Like, it is when like the heat from the mm. uh, sun. Okay. It's like it's when it's uh when it touches water. Okay. Good. Like evaporation happens, and then that evaporation goes into the air. Okay. And then it's like um, and then it forms clouds. And then cloud and forms. Then from that clouds, uh, we get water. I mean, we get rain. Okay, okay. So we here when sun's rays we are falling on this water body. Okay, not just water body. We could have what? We could have vegetation also now. We could be having vegetations also. So evaporation can occur from vegetation also. Yes, so let's sir. include them as well. So from so there basically also, land breeze and uh, sea breeze, right? No, we are not talking about land breeze and sea breeze yeah. here. That's the concept yeah. of wind here. That's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Vaiga, uh, now you go on. Explain it. Okay, sir. So, like the water in the lakes, rivers, and oceans get evaporated due to the heat of the sun. Mm -hmm. And the plants also release water in the form of water vapor into the air through the process of transpiration. Good. This water vapor uh, moves, uh, moves in a height okay. where temperature is very low mm -hmm. and condenses to the tiny drops of uh, mm. water, which is called droplets. Mm. Yeah. And these droplets form cloud, so okay. which fall back to the earth in the form mm. of rain. Mm. Exactly. So very good. Called precipitation. Very good. Very good. Very well explained. Sundus. Thank you, sir. So I already said. Okay, you have explained it. Okay. Yes. Okay, will you please uh, explain it again? I would like to hear you from you again. Sir, so, like it's a process of evaporation and mm. 
So it's like the process of evaporation and boring mm. of the Okay, okay. Okay, here. <coughs> now, so here, here we are seeing that when the sun's rays falls on the earth, the water starts to convert to water vapor. Thereby, we call it as evaporation. Now, when it occurs from the vegetation, there we call it to be transpiration. Okay, now, it's the same thing. Evaporation is happening with in the case of vegetation as well. Do you guys know? from which part of the plant the water vapor is, starts to come out uh, so the leaf obviously through the leaves okay yes, in the sir. leaves you have got very tiny pores that is called as what stomata stomata stomatal pores are there right now this is a stomata and in between the two guard cells you have got the stomatal pore right now so yes. why the stomatal pores the water starts to come out and anyone who would like to say explain why why in what way the process of transpiration benefits the plant like uh, so that so if we over like over water the plant hmm? uh, it can like make sure it's hmm. sufficient for it and then like uh Mm -hmm. like release the rest of the water into the air okay that is also correct also in the summer season plants do more transpiration you know if the, in the in the case of summer season the plants will generally be doing more transpiration because yes. just like our body sweats our body sweats in order to keep our body cool right so if someone were to sweat and sit under a fan okay thereby you will start feeling a bit colder so in the same manner the process of transpiration helps the plant to cool down one of the main reason is to cool down the temperature getting it now and yes, other sir. reason as chakrika explained to give back the extra water into the atmosphere right now yes sir. like it will get suffocated exactly exactly it won't be able to do the process of transpiration then the roots won't be able to breathe then yes, okay so here we have seen the first stage of the water cycle that is evaporation then after the evaporation has happened the water vapor will be rising into the air getting it now it will be rising into the air it will keep on rising keep on rising till there is a huge amount of water vapor collected right and then it will be reaching a point where the temperature is low temperature is low so we know the principle of conversion of water vapor back into water so thereby condensation will occur yeah so when condensation occurs what will happen the water vapors will be uh, accumulated over there and then they will be forming into water droplets droplets of water will be formed there getting it now so thereby yes, formation of cloud takes place right and once and once the volume of the water droplets have increased in it the cloud has become heavier then these droplets will start to fall back to the ground in the form of raindrops right now so that has been called as precipitation okay either we can simply call it as rainfall or precipitation yes sir and this is a natural circle that keeps on going in the nature it has been going on for millions of years ago for millions of years right yes sir okay now like in some cases now rather than falling into the liquid state uh, liquid form there's a snowfall also like we call it as hailstone also somewhere it is hailstone also yeah why does hailstone occur yes sometimes you might see hail stones also why is it so can someone explain that to me <laughs> like sometimes rather than uh, having a uh, precipitation or rainfall we get to have snow falling from the sky that is a uh, uh, snowfall why is it oh, so yes, guys uh, hmm? oh. like in uni once there was like ice falling Hmm. 
why is it so because i don't know sir if the temperature of that region is very low then the water rather than converting into water droplets it will convert oh. into it will convert into ice okay there where we get to see hail stones right yes sir. okay sir <laughs> okay and if someone were to hit by the hail stone then the person might get injured because since it's falling from a great height <clears throat> getting it now so that was all about the yes, the water cycle okay so water cycle we know it's a natural process that continuously happens on earth <clears throat> and in this process is the water lost is the water lost or the uh, overall concentration of water on earth remains same hmm? yes, sir, it remains same it remains same, same. Yeah. exactly okay it remains same and there were four phases of the water cycle on earth namely what were they the first phase was the phase of evaporation right second phase was condensation and the third phase here is transpiration now you ask what is the fourth phase now fourth phase involves collection of water right so as the yes. water is falling back on the earth it will be traveling along the surface and then it will be getting accum accumulated at different places on the earth like it will be getting accumulated in the rivers in the seas in the oceans so and underground exactly and seeping through the ground and getting stored as underground water also right now that's why as the urbanization is occurring more and more right now the um, bare ground the soil has been now replaced with the pavement solid pavements concrete pavements are there that's why the percolation of water is not decreasing in, into the ground yes. so if you like if somewhere way to like um, whenever there is a rainfall in city in metropolitan cities or whenever there is a huge rainfall in uh, rural areas in the villages which areas most likely to be flooded is it the villages or is it the rural or is it the urban areas hmm? where do, do we normally see floods Uh, certain villages, villages, sir. Villages, no. Here I have mentioned the factor rainfall, rainfall. Not the flood caused by the breaking of a dam or um, opening of a um, river from its course. Not in that case. I am talking about the uh, flood that is caused by rainfall. Usually, look what happens now. in the case of cities there are solid pavements now you know what is solid pavement concrete pavement the pathway is all made up of concrete materials while in the case of um, villages you have got the bare ground in which if there is rainfall the rain water can seep into the soil and the uh, it will be reaching the ground water thereby replenish, replenishing the level of the ground water while in so the case like hmm. uh, like ground water so your right yeah they are pure but you see uh, the plastic concentration of uh, the plastic use has uh, multiplied in the recent years okay it has multiplied yes. many folds that's why what has happened now even in the ground waters if uh, if uh, you were to study the ground water you will be finding microplastic particles in them also that can't be seen by the naked eyes Okay. Yes, sir. So the if you were to just drink the ground water, okay, or uh, especially the ground water in the city uh, city areas, so thereby there's a mm -hmm. high probability that it it would be consisting of toxic heavy metals in it, and apart from that, there's a probability of presence of microplastics in it also. Thereby, that plastic is entering into our system, into our body. Thereby, it will be causing problems inside our body as well. that's why it's unfit oh, to okay, drink th that water directly without being treated okay okay so the fourth phase in the Can case of water <clears throat> yeah the thing is that the <laughs> use of microplastics have increased so many times yeah sorry not the microplastics simply plastics okay since it has increased it has reached everywhere the plastics you know it has reach even the most uninhabited places on earth even the remote islands where there's no human life found there you will find a can of uh, uh, plastic you will be finding a, a bottle piece of bottle lying over the shores of the, that island hmm. 
so there by you see now not only just plastics suppose in in uh, areas where there is a uh, mine work going on where the mines are there and suppose in that mine so many heavy toxic ma uh, metals are present there so it's likely that through the rain water through the run of water that heavy metals heavy toxic metals might uh, get into the ground water right now so thereby the ground water also is not getting polluted contaminated by the microplastics and what the heavy metals are also the, like lead that is known to cause problems in brain of child okay if, if a child is is consuming a water that is rich in lead l e e d lead so lead is a very heavy and toxic metal that causes problem in the development of brain in young child uh, brain in young child <clears throat> okay now you might think what is this microplastics now microplastics are very tiny pieces of plastics that can be viewed under a microscope only okay yeah so it's like kind of one yeah something is it like yeah. it's like kind of bacteria right yeah you can uh, assume it in that manner okay well the bacteria are way smaller than the uh, microplastics okay now 